Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Josh Bellet, also known as the YouTuber Jimmy Slash. Josh is a kindred spirit in that his appetite for knives is insatiable. He has a special place in his heart for big knives, and he's a dyed-in-the-wool cold steel fanboy like yours truly. Uh, but for him, it runs a bit deeper. But aside from his taste in cutlery, it's Josh's warm, generous, funny, and slightly deviant sense of humor that has me coming back to his videos. At this point, he could be reviewing teacups and making videos about unicorns, and I'd tune in. It's always a pleasure to catch up with Jimmy Slash, but these days are particularly exciting for him, and I can't wait to get into it. But before we do, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and download the show to your favorite podcast app. That way, you can listen on the go. And as always, if you want to help support the show, you can do so at Patreon. Quickest way to get there is to head over to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Hey, Josh, welcome back. It's good to see you, sir. It's good to see you. I'm glad to be back. Thank yeah. you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. I've been really loving your shorts on YouTube lately, your short videos. Uh, you have you had the um, Rifle Hawk, or not the Rifle Hawk, the, uh, the, the War Club, the Rifle uh, War Club, Rifle Stock War Club from Cold Steel recently, obliterating some fruit. You had a, uh, uh, the new Arkansas toothpick. Uh, it looks yeah. like you're having a blast out there, man. Oh, yeah. It's totally fun. You know, no reason to do it if it's not fun. So, yeah, the Gunstock War Club, is that's a blast. I love playing with that thing. So I've, I've been on a, uh, I, I don't want to say a War Club um, phase. It's not quite a phase, but I was reunited with a War Club that uh, I had as a kid. Uh, that the family shared as a kid, and I, I kind of like, I kind of got it over Thanksgiving, and then I purchased a Wingard wearable War Club. I've been in the War Club mode. How is it uh, that Cold Steel War Club being out of polypropylene instead of wood? You know, I, I beat that thing against the that log I have, and I whacked that thing into some hard stuff, and it doesn't chip. It's, it's, it stands up to a really good beat, at least anything I can put through it. So it's pretty strong. Yeah, man. So I, I have no doubt, I guess, with the with the training implements I've had made out of that stuff, that it's uh, that it's pretty strong stuff. And if I know cold steel uh, and my shower knife made out of that same material, uh, it can withstand quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So for people who, who don't know you or maybe uh, haven't haven't uh, seen the last one, uh, last time you joined us, it was a uh, town hall, I believe. Uh, but how did you get into knives and making uh, knife review videos? I've always, you know, like knives as a kid. My dad gave me a buck, buck 112, I think it was, when I was about seven, eight years old. That was my first really serious knife. And you know, it's kind of an outdoorsy kid. I always, always had a knife on me. And then as I got older, I'd buy some knives here and there. And then about, I guess about seven, eight years ago, I went looking for a Christmas present for my uncle. And I ended up getting him a Benchmade 940. But through the whole process of just looking at reviews and looking at knives, it, the bug really bit me. So I guess, yeah, it was about seven, seven and a half years ago. And well, I guess seven years ago because it's December now. And it just, just bit me. And so I got a bad fever. And then I started getting more into reviews. And and I started watching, uh, of course, the grandfather of it all. It was nothing fancy. And, but then I got into bird shot in them. And, and it kind of showed me it was kind of fun to do. And it just gave me a, a way to talk to people and, and talk to people about knives. And I think, well, actually, I know my first cold review was a cold steel knife. So it just went from there. It was, it was a lot of fun and a lot of interesting people right off the get-go. And then just fell I, in love with it. I found you on a, a large cold steel folder uh, tear. You know, I go through these little phases where I'm just really into something and I collect it intensely for a short period of time. And I was uh, I was going uh, all out on 
the XL uh, Cold Steels. I have quite a collection. We've discussed that before. Uh, but I was really looking for uh, one of these, which is my most uh, coveted knife in my collection, by the way. More people ask oh, yeah. for me to sell my XL XHP uh, Recon 1. Uh, but that's what I was oh, looking yeah. to try and find. And I was just uh, hungry. You know how when you're looking for something and you're just hungry for videos on it and oh, yeah. a lot of the kind of knives you and i like uh, there's more of a limited uh pool right and yeah. and uh you had the stuff i was looking for and ever since then i've been a fan oh yeah you go in there and you're looking for first you're looking for justification to buy it and then you're looking for verification that you did the right thing so <laughs> yeah and, and on the huge knives sometimes it's hard to find that but yeah yeah. Do you, do you find yourself um, uh, before it even arrives, kind of looking to, at the next uh, the next thing? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I got stuff on the way right now, and I've been looking for stuff, you know, tonight. So yeah, I'm, I'm always looking for something to look at or share or review or, or the gifts, giveaways, and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm always looking. I got probably five thousand dollars in knives in carts all around the internet. So. Oh yeah, just waiting, just waiting. Yeah, pick me. Yeah. Let's wait uh, for that mood mood change or whatever I need. So, <laughs> or that late. You know what? Uh, this is uh, a good reason. Uh, another good reason for my stopping drinking. Uh, you know, the the late night. Oh, I'll I'll just do this now, and and you know, right. yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll never remember tomorrow, and it'll show up as a surprise. And what am I going to do then? Return it? Come on. That's right. <laughs> Um, so you sent me this knife, uh, a, a while back. Uh, this is, oh, uh, I had explained, you asked if, if I had a four max and I, uh, scout and I said, no, and, and, and you insisted and you sent this and I, I made the same sort of fob that oh, you, uh, you put on yours to, to commemorate the, the gift. I do appreciate this. How is it that you fell into, uh, love with cold steel? Uh, for me, it, it, it happened way back in high school. How did it happen for you? For me, it was right around that time I started doing reviews, probably about three or four months beforehand. And I got to looking at knives on Craigslist, oddly enough. And so this guy was selling a bunch of knives. I went online and looked, and it was a crazy good deal. And so it was <laughs> it was kind of, you know, that was Craigslist feeling it kind of a shady deal in a parking lot somewhere under a, you know, one stoplight or a dimly lit lamp or something. So I went out there and so it was supposed to be just for the American lawman. Hmm. And so I went out there and I, of course, did my review or looked at my reviews on those and it looked good. So I went out and got it. And he said, well, I got these other knives too. So like, one of the knives he pulled out was the XL recon that you just showed me. And then he had another XL in, I think it may have been two XL recons. I think one he'd taken the DLC off of. And then one was still still black, and so he sold me those. And as soon as I got those things, I was hooked. It was just you know like a heroin addiction. Just bam, I knew that was going to be part of my life for a long time. And then I started doing the research, and then the next thing I knew, I was looking at because the Formax, the American Formax, had just come out. I think that May, May of 2016. And so they that first run had already sold out, and so I was punch and refresh almost daily trying to see when they'd come out again. And they came out that second run and that was it. You know, I love that knife ever since. Oh yeah. That, that thing. I mean, this thing here is awesome. And, and I have it in uh, Grivery and Aus 10 a and, and uh, it's funny because this is the walk around version of this. They, they come in so many different models. I mean, not models, but so many different um, sort of, uh, what do you call it? Generations of uh, what production generations, I guess I, I should say. And I know you have them all. Um, you have a very extensive collection. Um, I, I know of, of knives in general, but, but cold steel seems to be uh, the real, the real body here. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I, yeah. I probably have six, 600 knives altogether, maybe something like that. Probably more. I haven't counted since last year. So I've gotten a bunch this year, but at least two thirds of that is cold steel for, for sure. So uh, what is it before, before, what is it? What is it about cold steel? Uh, is it the fact that they're so strong? Is it the fact that they're 
Oh, what is it? It's the strength. You know, I've, you, you know, I've always enjoyed strength, working out, whatever, you know, muscle building and stuff like that. And just the idea that you can't kill these things. And it's just such a strong knife. I like flippy knives and I like, you know, really pretty knives. And I like all those too. But just when it comes down to it, cold steel makes such a strong, indestructible knife. And, and I like that a lot. I like the idea that it's never going to break on me. That combined with the audacity of making all of these historical designs, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, for instance, take the Espada series, you know, the the traditional Spanish Navaja folder and, and making, you know, which is my favorite, one of my favorite all time historical weapons and turning it into a modern day a uh, fully more than capable, actually usable weapon instead of a reproduction kind of thing, uh, wall right. hanger is uh, to me. That's what I'm what what I love them for is just the fact that they're they they are the only ones out there making a these big knives, uh, these big folders, uh, but also b just a, a huge range of historic like really well made, combat ready historical weapons. Oh, certainly, yeah. It's not something that you're going to get at a flea market that's going to snap when you when you try to use it on something. That that was another thing that got me really sold on, not just cold steel, but the, the knife bug. When I was talking about looking at reviews, was getting into the cold steel, watching Lynn Thompson and Demko and all the guys over there cold steel slicing the things and chop through things. And yeah, that was just to me, it was just fantastic, and that was part of the bug was watching them destroy stuff with their knives. So is that what is, is that what got you into blade sports? Yeah, you know, we're uh, anyone who has followed your channel knows that you are involved in th plenty of other things outside of the knife world, and that adds to your the you know interesting dimensions uh, to your character. One of those things is blade sports. So you you test knives for your channel in a, in various ways. You've got the the hardcore shopping kind of stuff. And then you've got the brisket tests, which I love. Uh, but did doing all of that lead to actually wanting to um, make this activity more official through competition? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I, I, what happened was I bought a chopper first and I just wanted to be able to use it. I, I was a, I think it was a big Chris chopper. And I went to the school to, to get certified to go through the blade sports. Yeah, but being in fact, one time I was testing a knife, and I don't, I don't think it was, it was a Tops chopper, one of the Tops knives, and somebody commented that, and you know how people are, but they're like, you don't know how to chop worth a flip, and and so I was like, well, I'm gonna go learn how to chop worth a flip, and so, yeah, I just got the bug and went out there, and and the people are awesome, and you know, and competing is fun, and so, yeah, I love it. What what was the training like? They'd have like a all day, like a six, eight hour class where you go through and they show you the, each of the implements, they show you the safety rules and they give you practice on the different things. And then they do a, a mock competition at the end. So you kind of get an idea of, of what you're going to be doing. So it was, so it was really helpful. If you haven't seen one of these competitions, what are the kinds of things uh, you're doing? Is it like that show? Um... Oh, that show. What was the Forged in Fire spinoff? Uh, Knife or Death? Oh, yeah. Something like that. It was just uh, they they started the competitions to kind of as a way to show off what their knives could do. And initially, from what I understand, it started off as like, I made this knife and I bet I can cut through this faster than you. And so they made it kind of official competition. And they go through two by fours. You cut through two by fours. You cut through the big three different sizes of ropes. And then it comes down to, you know, like small testing, like uh, bendy straws, you know, they got a, a bendy straw and then you got to cut, cut the straw off before at the top of the bend. So you're trying to, you know, you're looking at strength, you're looking at, at finesse and you're looking at how sharp your knives are. And at the end of the, the competition, if you know, your knife is all beat up and chipped and then you're, you're disqualified for that too. So, it's just a way to show off what these knives can do, not just as weapons, but as, as tools. And that's what they really emphasize is the tool issue of uh, what a knife can do. What's the uh, hardest test? For me, I, well, 
I think the one that people fail the most on is are the straws. I mean, it's easy to go crazy on a two by four and that gets tiring, especially if your knife, is, you know, that second, you start with the two by four and you end with the two by four. And by the time you're done, that last two by four, you know, test your willpower. But, but I think the thing that most people fail on is the straws. You see these guys that are world champions swinging and missing at the straws all the time. So yeah, that's the toughest one. I would imagine to get that and to make it cut cleanly through the straw north of the bendy part, you would have to, A, have a very, very sharp knife still, uh, something thin enough behind the edge that you could actually make that cut. But you have to be swinging with a lot of precision and speed, it seems like, to get through something like that. Yeah, it's the precision and that whip. You got to get that whip on that. You know, you, you got a pound and a half of steel and you're trying to whip it, you know, like a six in, or a six ounce knife or something. So you get that, like you said, if it was just the whole straw, yeah, everybody would get it. But to get that, what is like an inch, inch and a quarter above that bend, and just you got to whip it, and there's no, there's no going up and tippy tapping it. So it's all, it's all that together. I think that's what that tests people most. So what are the qualities you're looking for in a knife that you're going to take into a competition? I know they all look squared off. They look kind of vaguely like elongated cleavers. Uh, but right. what, what what exactly are you looking for um, in a competition chopper? Well, you, first off, you want a steel that's going to hold up through the whole competition. You know, you can make a chopper that looks like a chopper, but like I said, if it bangs up and at the end of the competition it's not working, or if you get to a two by four and you go through a rope and then you go through the you know they had the vertical two by four, and if by the time you're done you can't cut anything, then you know, your chopper's pretty much worthless for competition. So you want something that's really hard. I've, you know, a lot of the popular steels are 3V, M4. I think there's some, mm -hmm. some of the guys are making them out of Maximet now. So you're looking at something that's going to hold up and you want something that's balanced and you want something that the handle is right for your hand, especially in the custom chopper. So yeah, just those things right there are, are going to get you. And of course you have to make them within the parameters of the competition. It can't be, the blade can't be more than 10 inches. It can't be more than 15 inches overall. And it can't be the, the thickness of the width can't be more than two inches. Hmm. And there's some little bitty things besides that, but those are the main ones. I've noticed how on, on some of the competition choppers, there's an angle, uh, the handle, the handle to the blade is it's uh, raked down a little bit. Um, right almost like a straight bladed kukri, you know, not, not that extreme, but in order to really maximize the, the angles. Well, you get the big guys, you got guys like Donovan Phillips and, you know, big Chris and these guys that are six foot six and six foot seven, you know, they don't need that angle, but you got a guy my height, you know, five foot eight. I need as much angle as possible so that, you know, my blades coming, coming down straight instead of, you know, right. hitting like this on the, on the different implements. So yeah, a little angle helps. You see a lot of the, the females because of their size, they have uh, really uh, exaggerated angles on their choppers as well. Oh, interesting. Uh, so um, I'm a bit of a, uh, well, I'm a sharp guy and uh, I follow you on Instagram and I noticed uh, something that seems really exciting, uh, but th there hasn't been any official word, I don't think, but what is happening with a collaboration with Cold Steel and Jimmy Slash? Okay, this spring is uh, they're coming out with the Jimmy Slash competition chopper. And I'm not sure exactly what the date is. Just been told this spring. And it's something we've been working on for over a year now, trying to get this thing nailed down. In fact, we're still working on it and getting it to where, you know, because, you know, it's not just made for my hand. You know, we're trying to get a broad, broad spectrum of people that are going to enjoy this. So it's a little bit more difficult than just making one competition chopper. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's going to be fun. Well, so what's it been like? What's the process been like working with them uh, specifically? I know you've been working with them a lot recently, and I want to hear about that. But I'm, uh, but I'm also very interested in this design process. What it was like working with a company that, uh, you know, I don't know. To say you adore them sounds weird, but you know, a company that you. Oh no! Sold. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, it all it all started at, at Blade Show. Uh, 2021 and i was you know when i worked the booth over with them the first time and man it's been 
you know, it's been a pipe dream of mine since I started this. You know, it's always, always, I, every once in a while, sneaking a joke or one of the uh, subs will say, when's your knife coming out? And, and, you know, so it's always been something that never really seemed like it was going to happen. You know, just something that was fun to talk about and fun to dream about. And then I mentioned it to them uh, in 2021 about it. And actually Donovan Phillips came over and he talked to them about it and, you know, kind of what it would take. And so, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, you get these people like, Oh yeah, that's what we want to do. Yeah. We should do that. And then, you know, it's crickets and you never hear from them again, but that's not the way it was. It ended up they were like, yeah, let's do this. And, and so I just kind of sent them my ideas on what I, what I wanted. And then they sent me, they sent me a prototype and I said, well, this isn't exactly what I want. Let's you know, keep working on it. And so they send me another one. I'm like, man, you know, that's great. This improved this. Can we fix this? And it's just been a year of back and forth, back and forth and constant contact and, and testing my shoulder. I've tested so many, so many different <laughs> choppers and chopping. I had my shoulders about dead for anything right now. So, but it's well, been awesome. It's the whole process has been awesome. What were some of the things uh, from the first prototypes? Uh, because they've never made a competition chopper. Uh, they've no. made a lot of a lot of great knives, and a lot of them are chopping centric, but uh, never anything like this. Uh, so, what were right. some of the what were some of the things that you noticed that you thought needed to change? Okay, yeah, the first prototype came, and it was a really cool knife. And if it had just been like a standalone knife, a cold steel standalone chopper. I'd have bought, you know, five or six of them, but it wasn't what I was looking for as far as a competition chopper. At first off, the the length was it was a little bit too long, and they're real sticklers about that. So if it's a quarter inch too long, they're not you're going to drive across country with your quarter inch too long, and they're not going <laughs> to let you chop with it. Right. And so it was a little bit too long, it was a little bit too wide, and it was really light compared to what I'm used to. It was almost like a female chopper. I think it was in the twenty ounce range. So it was a li little bit too light. I think the one we're coming out with is almost 27 ounces. And But it was a cool knife. It was a great knife, but it just wasn't what I was looking for. And the handle wasn't what I was looking for. I wanted more of an angle on the handle. And so it was just like a starting place. It was almost like sending a blank in and saying, here's this. What can we change? And at that point, it just started changing and molding into you know what it is what it is right now. So the handles on the competition chopper uh, choppers seem to be really ergonomic. They remind me almost of um, like Becker handles. Um, it, yeah. It it seems like in that sport uh, uh, and in that with that kind of knife, uh, comfort ergonomics is kind of paramount. Um, how how much and uh, how much shock do you feel in the hand? I mean, you're holding a piece of metal, whacking it into wood. How much shock do you feel in the hand? And what kind of things can be done to mitigate that shock in these designs? Well, yeah, a lot of it is going to be balanced. So if you got and, – and weight. So if you got a too, not enough weight, it's just going to be bouncing off and, of course, edge. But when you're coming down, you're wanting that thing just to come down and sink into that wood or sink into whatever you're chopping into. And so, but if it, you know, if the weight, if the balance is off, then you're going to be coming down too hard or you're, you're going to be really feeling it. So you want that, that balance point. Like everything is just momentum, just coming down and you're not going to feel a lot in your wrist. And I'm actually, I know it sounds crazy, but I got into the competitive arm wrestling about six months before I got into chopping and the weird uh, tendons and stuff that the arm wrestling did. The chopping doesn't bother me unless I do it excessively. Like I've been doing trying to test this thing. So the competitions don't really bother me that bad. But if you're trying to, like you said, mitigate it for the average person. Yeah. It's just going to be the balance point. It's going to be the handle, like a handle that's straight for me. I'm going to be coming down trying to come down like that to get that blade straight. So that's going to put a different impact on me than yeah. if it was an angled form. Right, right. And it's going to force your wrist into an unnatural position. And after a while, you'll have all sorts right. of repetitive stress 
uh, injury right. and stuff like that. So what kind of edge I, I'm imagining the profile of a, of a competition chopper as being uh, somewhat triangular, somewhat wedge like you'd be strong enough to take all this impact. Uh, but, but what is it? An apple seed edge or a, like a convex edge or uh, uh, a lot of them have convex edges. Uh, I know that Donovan puts a convex edge on his, a couple of guys just put the regular edge on there and they have a good heat treat on their blades. I think we're going to be going with the convex edge. I think it's a, I think 23 degree convex edge. And so, yeah, it worked. The, the edge worked out well for this last competition. I was able to, the, to do the slicing stuff uh, pretty easily. So I haven't, I've only seen cold steel do a convex edge once and it was on, uh, I think it was an older model San my um, trail master. Uh, they did an apple seed edge on their their most expensive steel version of it uh, a few years, some years back. I do remember a convex grind, but so that's that's exciting to hear because that's not something that they generally do. No, yeah, they don't do a lot of it, and yeah, from what I've seen from the testing I've done for this steel, it's gonna that's gonna be the most durable thing. I I banged into this this edge that's on here, and I haven't had any issues with it. And and what steel is it? It's a three V three V three V steel. Okay, so cold steel has been, <coughs> pardon me, cold steel has been on a three V kick lately. It's exciting to see. Yeah. It's it's exciting for for two reasons. One reason is that three V is an awesome steel, and it's great to see some of their um, big burly knives in three V. Uh, but also in coming out with three V, and they're those being pretty handsomely priced knives they felt it necessary to come out with the 4034 versions of those which i'm very happy for because it kind of uh, allowed me to get uh, a notch as bowie which i've wanted for years but i was not going to buy the 3v version because i don't right. need 3v for this because this right, is yeah. only for dueling josh i'm not going to be That's taking right. this out to the woods <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so uh well, uh, the cable tang will suffice <laughs> there you go yeah no yeah that i love the 4034 stuff they do I beat up that 40, 34 stuff just as much, if not more than I beat on my, you, know, you feel it's, it seems odd because the 40, 34 shouldn't take as much as a three V. So I should feel better about taking my three V out. But like you said, they get kind of pricey. And so you don't want to go out and beat on them too much. Yeah. So, but the 40, 34, I haven't had any issues with it holding up to chopping and smashing. It just, it's, it's really good, really good steel. The, that 40, 34 kukri is, you know, for all it, the average person's purposes is going to hold up just as good as that 3V one. It, it, I'm, awesome. I'm starting to feel like, uh, like, um, yes, uh, blade, um, blade steels like 3V and uh, Maximet and uh, M4 are outstanding, amazing, you know, stellar blade steels. But there are some, oh my God, look at that arm. But there are some blade steels <laughs> Also, that uh, like three CR, three CR thirteen. I've I recently needed a fix, and I got a cheap. Uh, I got the mule, the black mule Bowie from Rough Rider, and I've beaten the living daylights out of it, and it is still sharp and still super strong. And uh, I know that Cold Steel, the the knives that they have been uh, selling, packages outdoor knives that they've been selling at Walmart are in th in. 3CR, and you did a whole series on those knives. Uh, so it just kind of goes to show you that, yeah, the, those amazing super steels are amazing and super, but some of the un-super steels are still pretty damn super. Oh, yeah. I think we, uh, as knife fans and, you know, knife re review uh, addicts or whatever we watch, and, and we, we get uh, biased and we get brainwashed that, you know, anything, you know, it, for a while, the S35VN was just, oh, my gosh, it's amazing. And now everybody's like, why why would you make a knife in S35VN? And and so, but, yeah, what happened was that another reviewer had posted something about the Walmart knives from Cold Steel, and I hadn't seen them yet. So I was like, oh, man, I got to get on top of this. You know, I want to see what's going to what's gonna happen because they hadn't reviewed it. They had just uh, taken a picture and, and showed that 
there was Cold Steel was selling at Walmart. And that, yeah, that, that and was Math, Matthew Culbertson. He was Matt Culbertson. Yeah, yeah, he was he yeah. was like shocked and bummed, and he's a super super Cold Steel fan. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a great dude. But he's arm wrestler too. So. Yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's a big dude. He um, but so that was one of my fears when GSM took over. I was, you know, if you go back and look at one of my videos, I was like, man, they're gonna start selling blister packs at Walmart, and so. Sure enough, blister packs at Walmart showed up. And so I ordered, I ordered it right away, got it in and I got it out of the pack and it just, it, you know, to be honest, it felt kind of flimsy. I was like, man, I'm going to do a review on this. Cold steel is going to kick me out of cold steel. And, you know, <laughs> and so I, I took, I took a beat. I beat that thing. And I went through two by fours and just, and it didn't roll the edge. It didn't do anything. All that, was on one knife and I didn't sharpen it. I didn't, I don't even think I, uh, I don't think I stropped it or anything. And that thing just kept taking it and taking it. It didn't break. It didn't chip. It didn't roll. And like you said, I, the three CR held up and I think we just, everybody wants three V. Everybody wants something in max and met. Everybody wants something that's high end like that M three ninety, you know, 20 CV or whatever. And that's cool. And I understand that. I have so many knives like that. Yeah, I understand that. But for actual use, I would take that thing out in the woods and not be afraid to take it out in the woods as my only knife because it took a beating. And, and I think the people that still, you know, poo poo on it are the ones that haven't really tried it or the ones that are just going to be negative about anything you put out there. Well, I, I for one, was really happy to see your video because I saw, uh, Culbertson's video first and then a few days later or a week or whatever I saw yours and uh, I totally related to him and then when you came on I was like okay all right I, let's 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 cross our fingers because I, I I'm rooting for them and and you know the that GSM sale uh, my my personal thoughts uh, you know were like geez these guys have been my favorite forever and, oh, yeah. uh, and, and it's, and it, a lot of it has to do with Lynn Thompson, like pretty much all of it has to do with Lynn Thompson and that, which doesn't has to do with Andrew Demko. So yeah. I hope it's, this whole thing works out. And so far, you know, I thought it was a good idea to ask, uh, what models would you like us to bring back? They brought back the tall war, which I appreciated. Still need to yeah. get that. Uh, I still need to get the tall war. I want to get it serrated. Uh, they did not listen to me and bring bring back the black rhino, unfortunately. Oh, I told them the same thing. Yeah, I want the black <laughs> rhino back. Oh God, I love that knife. Uh, but but so far, I've been pretty psyched. You know, I've gotten uh, a number of cold steels. Uh, I got a Taipan uh, recently. Finally, that's a knife I've wanted for twenty five years, and I don't know why it's come in and out of my price range for you know many times. And I finally bought it. So I think that uh, so far. They've handled, uh, it seems to me from the videos that Stickman really likes the whole cold steel thing and really likes knives. So I think a lot of attention is going to it as a brand. Oh, yeah. They've, instead of, uh, I think a lot of people were afraid, and I was afraid too, it was going to go the way of kind of like Gerber and the way that they've just become a mm -hmm. more of a budget brand all around. Yeah. And like I said, I told everybody, go out and buy your cold steel now because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Probably started a panic run. Probably was possible for cold steel stock going through the roof. But, yeah, they, Stickman has leaned into the Lynn Thompson spirit. He's really leaned into, you know, spending money on, on the, the jail dummies and chopping things and smashing things. And and, and just he's been out there to, to cut with Lynn Thompson. They've. They've kept Lim Thompson in, in the mix as far as videos and different things. And I wish I could tell people, you know, well, the things I know that are coming up and all the people that are, you know, negative or people that think that it's dead. It's not. There's so much exciting stuff that Cold Steel is, is going to do. And they, the guys that are in charge really want Cold Steel, the Cold Steel brand and spirit to just keep going. Well, it's smart business. I mean, why, why, uh, why mess with something that was so successful for so long? You know, those proof videos that came out every year. Oh man, that was so exciting. I, I, oh, yeah. I loved getting those DVDs. 
And um, I mean, that all of those, I believe, uh, kind of gave permission to shows like um, Forged in Fire to, to, to do those sort of pig tests and the destructive tests and all that. I mean, a lot of that, oh, yeah. I think, was uh, was sort of pioneered by by Lynn Thompson and and oh, Cold Steel. So so it makes sense for GSM to to why 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 change it if it works? Uh, but there also seems to be a real love, not just a shrewd business maneuver. Oh, yeah. And they're not just resting on the laurels. They're not just going to keep bringing back the formats or keep bringing back the recon. Or They're going forward with, with new designs and new ideas and, and stuff that it's going to be really cool when it comes out. You know, the people are just are going to be very excited about it. You can tell that you're excited about something besides just your <laughs> knife because you're like, oh, I want to oh, say yeah. it. I well, do. I, I want to say it bad, but I, I want to be with Cold Steel tomorrow too. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was really excited to see. Um, I was lurking around on their page recently and uh, saw that they have a Chris, like the one over my shoulder, coming out as both a sword and a dagger. Uh, but oh, yeah. but in the in the somewhat traditional build like they did with the... Um, with the Danny No Santo uh, commemorative bolo, which was so cool, um, I, I just kind of want like I, I want I, I want all the cold steels, and then to be able to say, well, I don't need this one or this one or this one, and the rest I'll keep because to say which ones I want is is a ludicrous, um, Aaron. Um, oh, definitely, yeah. You know, it's just it's just my. So what what is your what kind of stuff do you do for them? What is your working relationship with Cold Steel? Just, um, I just do reviews. I'm supposed to be doing some designs like the chopper. I'm not sure when I'll be, if I'll be designing anything this year and just, uh, just mostly videos for them and knife reviews. And so they've, they've made it to where I'm exclusively with, uh, with them for, for the last year and a half now. And since the GSM bought SOG, I can do SOG stuff too, but yeah, it's just, Basically doing the same thing I was doing, just exclusively with with the cold steel stuff for now. Oh, that's cool. So, what do you um, what do you think of? Well, I mean, if so, oh, like if the um, blister pack knives that you got from Walmart, what if they sucked? You'd be in a pretty awkward position. What do, what do you do then? Luckily, their their knives don't suck. But what if they did? Oh, I'd be honest about it. I'm not gonna. They don't pay me. I'm not saying there is enough money, but they don't. I'm not going to. I've spent the last six years building up trust in the community and being honest. And if you go back, I've, you know, in the past, I caused some stink at Cold Steel about different things that I've brought up and they weren't happy with me. But my main goal is to, well, to entertain and have fun, but also to, there's guys out there that, you know, they work hard. They got 50 bucks. You know, they're going to save the money. Man, they're going to build up 400 bucks. And I want them to buy something that's worthwhile. And it ain't worth what my name, it ain't worth my reputation. And, and to sit there and just sell something so that, you know, Cold Steel will pay me money. I'm not going right. to do that. So, yeah, if it, if it had broken, <laughs> if it had messed up, I would have said something. I was like, look, there's a $12 knife. Took a hundred wax and snapped in two. So, I mean, actually, you you really add a lot of value for them because uh, a you love your product, you love their product, and you're rooting for them. But at the same time, you beat the crap out of your knives, uh, if you don't mind me saying so. Like your old tray table and all the different things that you uh, have have destroyed with your knives, you put them through the paces, and it's. If, if something is bad, it's going to be evident in the work you do. You won't be able to cover it. So, I mean, you're a real right, yeah. asset to them in terms of, you know, that kind of transparency. Yeah, that's, that's, I, maybe that's why they got me. I mean, there's a lot of bigger channels and prettier people they could have got. And I think maybe they knew I was going to be honest or they knew that, you know, I've been following Cold Steel for a long, long time and, and they knew. You know, they had to have known what I've, you know, talked about that was uh, negative in the past about the different things I've run into and the changes that I want to make. And like I said, I don't want somebody going out on my review, buying a two hundred dollar knife, and then finding out that you know I lied or I was totally yeah. dishonest. And I, 
you know, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here yeah. to, to, for the, for the, the knife community, basically. Well, and, and you just wouldn't last. I mean, no one does when their reputation is sullied because that's oh, yeah. all you that's all you have. Uh, I'm sure you're allowed to discuss this, but what, what are some of the other knives, uh, other companies? What's what's exciting to you right now in the greater knife world? Oh, I don't know. I'm probably not allowed to discuss, you know, too much, but I've seen some stuff from. Uh, some of the Chinese companies, like there's some Kaisers that I've, I've been looking at. And I'm really, I know it sounds funny and it's just because Cold Steel's not doing anything with it, but I like the idea that the Axis Lock is going everywhere. I'm a big fan of the Axis Lock. And I'd love to see Cold Steel do something with the Axis Lock again. You know, the, the, I think they used to have a recon that was Axis Lock or something similar. Yeah, and, the first recon ones were, yeah. Yeah, I love, I love that the Axis Lock is is everywhere you know this, you're seeing it with uh, kaiser and even the those walmart those are trail i think they, they came out yeah. with an access lock so yeah so, it's yeah. supposed to be pretty decent that's what i heard yeah so that kind of stuff is kind of cool i like i like seeing that stuff i haven't really been you know kept my finger on the pulse of anything super exciting or stuff uh um rosecraft blades they're having some cool stuff some cool designs and you know, I like that kind of stuff. You know, being with Cold Steel exclusively, you know, it, it kind of handcuffs me as far as what, you know, I can review and stuff. And that, it, there's a trade-off. There's a trade-off. It's like getting to date the prettiest girl at the high school, but then you don't get to look at the other girls anymore. So that's all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about just dating the, the prom queen for me for right now. So. Well, let me tell you about this other, this other chick uh, called Work Tough Gear. Oh my God, man. They're, <laughs> Okay. Okay. Woo! I saw <laughs> no. that. What was it? The Amish John or something like that? Yeah. There's there there are a lot of them. I can't. I can't. I'm I'm trying to keep track of them. Um, uh, fellow YouTuber Scab sent me a couple to check out, and they're 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 gorgeous. They're just gorgeous, and he's beating them up uh, in his testing, so I don't have to be gentle or worry about them, and that that's nice too. Uh, but these knives, they're they're just big, robust. Uh, very small batch production knives, I guess made in Taiwan uh, in a smallish factory um, by an individual and his team. And yeah, they're, they're drool worthy, but, but what I like about them is that they're, they're kind of, um, they remind me a little bit of us, of a micro brew version of cold steel and that they have a lot of different designs. Some of them somewhat exotic in looks but but super robust and um and and they have that uh that spirit of fun and exploration let's let's see what this giant recurve looks like and cold steel oh, yeah. is never afraid i mean the fact that they just came out with or uh, that they're coming out with a chris with a i mean well i i was just carrying my uh, uh this week i was carrying my tylight xl chris and my voyager xl chris i've been in the chris frame of mind the past couple of days and uh the fact that they're doing and that is not an easy blade to make or grind an edge no, on no. i mean yeah. so the fact that they nailed it for big big time production and you know i have three of them and they're all perfect and i've examined them and and the fact that they're doing it large scale with swords i mean that's that that shows a spirit of adventure and excitement and like just love of the thing, because why go through all that if not? No, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're not afraid. Yeah, I've seen the those W was it WTG blades and yeah, they like you said they have that just monstrous feel look to them. Like what what can I do with this? What can I destroy with this? And and not just the exotic looking, but as far as it you know, just usable too. And that's, that's kind of what I like a lot about cold steel. Yes. Yes. And, it's like, and the, it, it's like that Chris Voyager. It's bizarre looking and you know, it's going to slice something, but then I used it to, to cut up some meat and it was, it was perfect. It just worked. It was perfect as, as a slicing knife. And it, you know, of course it's going to mangle somebody that messes with you, but it just, yeah, it just works on so many different levels. Now, what do you, what have you been carrying? What do you EDC these days? Uh, I know, I know when, you know, 
Well, what have you been carrying these days? Oh, you know, I've been carrying this a lot. This is the from SOG. It's a little oh. slip joint. What is it? The uh, stout. Yeah, the stout. They make a flipper and they make a slip joint. Man, I love this. The silly little knife. It's, it's been perfect. And also been carrying this jobber here. This is the 8010 Tanto. Oh, and yeah. then, I don't know if you knew Nathan's knives. He made up some pink pink liners for him, if you can see that. Oh, yes, yes. I've seen this so, in, on Instagram. And so I've been carrying that. I have been carrying a black talon a lot. And the serrated black talon, I love that knife. Yeah. But the thing is, I get in these moods, and I get in these moods like, oh, man, this guy needs a knife. What do I got? And I've probably given three or four of those away this year. Huh. just got it out of my pocket so i haven't had one i gotta give me another one but yeah i look if i have a black talent i'll probably be carrying that mostly that's my favorite man i i love the black talent uh but this week i carried one that you panned actually i remember when it came out i was like oh what does jimmy think of this uh is it the immortal know? yes yeah all right <laughs> yes i've kind of immortal. changed my mind i need to do a different uh review on that yeah i, I got one last year and i'm into kind of update what my review was i was a little bit harsh on it some well, of the I, some of the things still stood but yeah i like that thing uh, i remember what really stuck in your craw were the ergonomics the grooves that they uh didn't weren't aligning with your fingers and i was like oh that that makes sense i think i have smaller hands you know and it fits it fits me perfectly in a hammer grip. okay and and so just this week it was one that i dusted off and just because I haven't carried it in a long time. And I was like, man, this is so cool. It's like a dagger meets a Tonto meets a, um, a Gladius, you know, yeah. such a cool knife. Um, and it, but it made me think of you. I'm like, I wonder why he, and, and then I remembered. But, well, but so, yeah, I think a lot of that was, yeah, I wasn't trying with the hammer grip as much as I was, you know, just kind of trying with the regular grip. And the way my hand was, was reaching was turning my fingers sideways. And if I remember right, the grooves on that immortal are straight up and down. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I got one last year and I meant to update it. And I think I just just forgot to. But yeah, I, I really like that knife. I've uh, changed my mind a lot, especially on the, the cutting edge. And it, it's just usable, too. It's just really usable. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad I got that. That's discontinued. There's there's. uh what there's that big leaf shaped bladed one the colossus I, the colossus that Man. that was discontinued and i i i'm a fool i know like oh, so many times i was like i should get that but not today and uh yeah. you know they that, showed that, up on uh what was it woot i don't know if you know about woot.com uh -uh. they have knives on there uh -uh. first like crazy deals on different stuff but one one month woot had the colossus on there and they were like 89 bucks I think I bought four of them. Just ended up ended up giving them away, and I just wish I. I think I have one left. I just wish I kept three or so. so Josh, yeah. you're a very generous guy. I mean, you're talking about giving those, uh, giving the the black talent away, and that uh, those away. You gave me this just because I said I didn't have one. Um, and you had the the PIF program for a long time, um, which I know, man that 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 touched a lot of people. And it and and it got huge, uh, and and probably exhausting and cumbersome. But uh, tell tell everyone a little bit about the the PIF, uh, your PIF program. Till the till early summer this year, I kind of put it on hiatus. I still ended up giving up a lot of stuff since then, just not officially under under PIF. But it started February two thousand seventeen with a really, really good friend. Now I, I did a trade with them and he sent me a bunch of extra goodies with this knife that we traded for. And it was, it wasn't anything like huge. It was just like stickers and little coins. And, and it, I just remember having a really crappy day to that point. And then it just felt so good that this guy sent me all this extra stuff. And it was just weird. I was like, man, I really, I need to, and I, I need to pay it forward. I need to pay this feeling forward to somebody. And so I got with him and got with the channel and then just started from there. It started, I think that first year, 
with, uh, I think we gave out like, I think we averaged about five or 600 boxes a year for five years. So it's like between 2,500 and 3,000 boxes I've sent out. And it was just all the charity of the people, of people sending in the money. I mean, that's, you know, three grand and, was it? yeah, no, 3,000 boxes, $30,000 in shipping. Jeez. If you think about 3,000 boxes, yeah. so that's 25,000, $30,000 in shipping. And this, most of this came from people, you know, just giving into Patreon or sending me cash or sending me money. And then of course everybody was donating stuff and 550 cord and knives and first aid kits and different things. And so, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was pretty awesome. And it may or may not be coming back this year. So I got to talk to some, some people. So. so was it going out to people in need or just pe- just enthusiasts? Just uh, I, what I would do is I say, Hey, I'm, we're having a PIF sign up. And what would happen is, of course, at the, be, at the beginning, I was able to just give out to people that signed up because I didn't have that many subs. And as my channel got bigger, I kind of had to do a raffle during the year for sign up because so many people would sign up. And then for Christmas, we call it a PIFmas. Everybody that signed up got a box. And so that sometimes it was, I think one year it was 400 people that we sent out 400 boxes and 300 here. It was, it was, it was always in that range. So yeah, it was, it was fun. It was fun. And I got a lot of people like, you know, having the worst day of my life, my sink broke, you know, there was flooding or my car broke down and, you know, this box is in, in my mailbox and just kind of made me feel better. So that's what it was. That's what it was all about. That's pretty awesome. I, I think, um, uh, well, I think that's very generous and I've met a lot of people in this knife community who uh, have the same spirit. Um, you know, there's a lot of generosity going around and it's cool to hear oh, yeah. how, how you translated the feeling someone gave you and broadcast it, you know, to a bunch of others over five years. Um, I, I forgot to ask when we were talking about your chopper before, do you have it around to, to show this is a visual medium after all? Oh, I brought it out. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's go wide. Look, first of all, I'm looking at a beautiful leather sheath and cold steel needs to do more of this. Yeah, I think uh, so. I think on some of their higher end stuff, some leather would be nice. Yeah. Like the, so yeah, it comes with the, the leather sheath and just a kind of a classic chopper look. Wow. There you go. Let me see. So here's the uh, Jimmy slash signature on there. Yes. And then on the other side is the cold steel and the CPM three V. I think it says Taiwan on there, dude. And, so, and I, oh my god, this is that is okay. That's beautiful. I love the very, 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 very subtle. There's like a slight curve to it, right? It's not. Yeah, exactly no, straight. yeah. I had to put. Well, they couldn't make it as exaggerated as I needed to be, but they had to exaggerate. I wanted to exaggerate a little bit, so yeah, it's got a curve on it. You know, for just for the average guy, you know, let's say you're five ten. Yeah, yeah, that's a good enough curve for you. So, oh, I was referring to the cutting edge. Cutting edge isn't exactly oh. straight either, is it? It's like slightly no, no, curved. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, a little bit on there. So, what what uh, HRC do they run the three V? Do you know? I want to say it's fifty nine, but I have to really verify that. But I think it's fifty nine on this. God, that that is that is beautiful. I love the, uh, I don't know if it's called a fuller on this kind of or not the fuller, but the swedge on top. Yeah, the swedge. Yeah. So the, I, I I assume that's cut out to uh, aid in balance, right? You're not. Yeah, I think yeah. it's for balance. Yeah, it's not necessarily a weight thing as much as it is like you don't want to take too much weight away from it. Mm-hmm. In fact, I have an earlier version of the chopper here, and this one is a little bit lighter than this one is. So this one is actually, I think it was 24 ounces or 23 and a half, something like that. And so, and then the, the newer one is 26.7 or something like that. Nice. So this so is the newest just gave one. it a, a little more weight. God, those are beautiful. 10 inch blades. You said, yeah, 10 inch blades, 15 overall. And, uh, Oh man, I I think I I think I I I have my eye on my first competition chopper because 
Oh yeah, it's, it, it's really. I mean, my like just with like everything else, I didn't just want something that was thrown out there, and I didn't want something that just have my name on it. I just, yeah. That's not what I wanted. I didn't want to just go like, oh yeah, this is Jimmy Slash the steak knives or something. I want something that people are going to be happy that they bought. Otherwise, it's just it's just going to be meaningless to me. Well, not only that, but people can buy it knowing that uh, whether or not they use it uh, in in competition, that it's passed your muster and it's been, you know, designed by you in collaboration with Cold Steel. So it's it's not a it, it's not a set of steak knives. It's it's a real yeah. it's something that you basically, in a sense, built for yourself so that everyone yeah. else can experience what you what you find ideal in a knife like that. Yeah, that was the whole purpose behind this was it's not and obviously it's not going to be super cheap. I think they're going to try to get in the like 450 range, something like that. But, you know, to get a custom chopper, it's going to cost you between 800 and 1000 and 1200 dollars. And I really wanted people to be able to experience blade sports if they wanted to and to have something out there that was fairly affordable compared to what's out there now what i'm you know and this might just be a gateway drug for some people into getting their own custom chopper it might be like oh yeah i love this one but you know something to help help fit my hand better would be better or something that you know chopped a little bit different angle would be better and that's great but you know it's first for the average person just to get into it I, i'd love for this to be it and also, like you said, it's such a usable knife on on every other different level too, as far as something you can take out and not worry about. Yeah, take out back and chop wood for the family campfire. That's right. Uh, yeah, you know, or or there's also another kind of buyer, the knucklehead who can't stop, uh, who who likes collecting knives designed by his buddies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like like that is something I don't have a competition chopper and have no need for one, but would love to have one or that one. In particular so uh yeah i think that i think there will be an audience and and you know if people balk at the price it is a giant slab of uh of 3v and 3v is not only you know a a, a high-end and great steel but it it uh, takes a lot to work it because it is yeah. uh, hard steel so they go through a lot of uh, time and uh, expendable materials to to work it so all of that stuff adds up certainly yeah yeah a pound basically a pound and a half of of three v steel so i don't i don't know if there's a cold steel knife that weighs that much in three v so it's pretty awesome well there is now josh what do you see on the horizon for uh for the jimmy slash channel and uh for your knife designs and uh what, what would you like to see happen over time um, I think this year, I know it sounds weird, but I haven't, I haven't really, I've been outside doing stuff. I really want to do a lot of more outdoor stuff. I got some different trips planned, some, some hunting stuff to do, some outdoorsy stuff that I haven't really, haven't really got into so far on my channel. I'm trying to, I'm going to do that this year. And as far as design and stuff, just kind of what the public clamors for, I'm trying to push them into i don't know how much it's going to happen but a lot of people want like an xl uh, black talent stuff like that i'm trying to talk to people about you know getting stuff like that xl black talent i would like to see or like a 3v4 max you know stuff that people have asked for stuff that people are looking for or bring like bring back the recon i'd love them to bring back the the recon xl oh if and, they did that they would have a million buyers immediately yeah well, uh, uh, that but might yeah, be... no, you're right. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think mean... it's five, five out of me for sure. So. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> I was like, maybe not a million, but they would sell several between the two of us. Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I like that. I, I like that. Um, you're thinking of bringing for you know, for your channel, uh, bringing us along on some of your adventures. I, I have found that I love those kind of videos, like, um, with with other channels. Uh, you're one of my trusted voices. You know, like people I go to time and time again to hear about certain kinds of knives. And I love it when, when, um, when it's changed up every once in a while, we get a chance to see a different aspect of someone's life or uh, someone's knife usage. So yeah, take us camping. We'll come with you. Oh yeah. 
Well, yeah, it's going to be interesting because I haven't been camping in so long. So it'll be a learning experience for me and, and hopefully enjoyable for the viewers. So I'm excited about doing that. Well, we know what you'll use to make your kindling. And, oh, definitely. Uh, it's the Jimmy <laughs> Slash Chopper. Congratulations on that. And Thank uh, you. thanks so much for coming on the show, Josh. It's always a pleasure catching up with you, sir. Oh, thank you for having me. It was a blast. All right. Take care. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Josh Belay, Jimmy Slash, one of my favorite people in YouTube knifedom. And so exciting to hear his collaboration with Cold Steel. They don't do a lot of collaborating. So it's, uh, you know, every once in a while. Uh, so it's really cool to see that. Uh, I can't think of anyone better suited for, for such a thing. So great to talk with Josh. Uh, be sure to join us next week for another great conversation. And of course, Wednesday uh, for the midweek supplemental. And who could forget Thursday night, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube for Thursday Night Knives. You can also catch it on Facebook and Twitch. And uh, and we'll see you here then. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.